What is going on guys? Welcome to the Big 12 Team Builder Dynasty Madden 19 version. We've got the pro update with the Miami Dolphins with Jeff Henderson leading the way as the head coach. Jed Carmichael at quarterback, the former McAllen quarterback. And other players that you guys have known to come and love. Andre Wingo at running back. Drakeenan Timmons at wide receiver. Paris McMillan at wide receiver. Todd Parker at defensive tackle. It's an all team builder takeover of the Miami Dolphins. And I love it. We're currently at 6-2. We're trailing the Cleveland Browns, guys. The Cleveland Browns in our first place in the AFC right now. Tampa Bay Buccaneers being led by former Odessa State quarterback Montana Flynn. Currently at a 4-4 record. C.J. Wicks, a former Midland State Mustang, is leading his Broncos to a 2-6 start. We're halfway through the year. We're going to be doing a, quite a bit of simulating in this episode guys and you can see we're still going on a hot streak here 31 to 20 is their final score against buffalo judd carmichael played pretty well 349 yards two touchdowns andre wingo still being a boss only averaging three and a half yards per carry though i would have liked to see that get up a little bit to the fours but when you score two touchdowns on the ground I'm going to take that. Paris McMillan doing his thing, 4 for 41. Drakeenan Timmons caught a touchdown. He went 3 for 80. Got to love that, right? Got to love that. We also beat the next opponent, the New Orleans Saints. Under Wingo, again, two touchdowns, had 4.1. Those are numbers that I like. And look at the touchdowns that we got on the ground, guys. Clement, Logan Sweeney, another former Odessa State player. These guys are are balling out. Drakeen Timmons is contributing yet again with three for 47. Manuel Agua, a guy that we signed in the free agents a couple years ago, had a couple tackles for losses. And Armand Hammer is getting an upgrade. He's getting a little bit of a boost. If you guys remember Armand Hammer, an ACU product, who was just a boss. Who was just a boss. Unfortunately though, we would end up losing to the Denver Broncos, the CJ Wicks led Denver Broncos. And Jed Carmichael, I thought he did well in, as far as the passing yards went, but he did throw those costly two interceptions, and it, I think it cost us the game. We lost by one possession. One score, pretty much. Paris McMillan, oh my god. Five for 125, and it's in a score. Odell Beckham's being put on notice right now, guys. Drakeen and Tim is only one catch for 18. Juwan James, no sacks allowed. That was good. That was good. Todd Parker, though. Oh my God, four tackles for losses for the big Todd Parker. Now guys, Andrew Luck is still playing in this and he's throwing the ball to Amari Manuel. So we're gonna have to shut him down a little bit here. Minka Fitzpatrick there on the left side guarding him. But here's a big bomb deep. It's gonna be a touchdown maybe? No, a flag is gonna move the football back as Andrew Luck was across the line of scrimmage as he let go of the football. So guys, yeah, we're getting a, we're getting a little bit of gameplay here for you, just so you can kind of see how these guys are doing in action. Want to get some sim in here, but I know you guys want to see some of your favorite team team builder players in action. Andre Wingo still being a madman here, taking people out, busting off of tackles, letting his guards and his offensive linemen lead the way. But unfortunately, there's going to be a flag on the field, and it's going to be a holding call. Actually, a push, a block in the back. Excuse me, block in the back on a third and inches. Thanks a lot there, Tony Adams the third, former fullback of ACU. There's Jeff Henderson on the sidelines. Another false start. Another penalty for Miami, and this time it's going to go against Mike Gusecki. Come on, guys. we got to get this thing going. We've got to get this thing going. Here comes Jed dropping back on a third and seven. Incomplete. He was looking for Gasecki on that Seattle route, that wheel route. It's not going to happen. Not going to work. So first and 10. Here's Paris McMillan picking up a first down. Carmichael 7 of 10 for 65 yards so far. Third and 9 situation. And looking for Drakeen and Timmons on that right side of the field. And I think there's just some miscommunication going on there. So Miami's going to have to settle for another field goal. Now here comes Andre Wingo. Bust off that tackle. He will pick up a huge gain on the play. First and 10. Here's a nice pass to Odell Beckham. Getting dropped at the four-yard line. Now here comes Wingo at the goal line. 
He's going to get hit hard, but he's still going to hold on to the football, and that's going to be a touchdown Miami for the first touchdown of the game. Let's go ahead and skip a little bit further ahead here. 13 nothing and interception. Interception by McCain. And late in the second quarter, Luck throws a costly interception. And we're going to skip even further to the end of the game. To the end of the game. 40 seconds to go, and this one's pretty much going to ice it. Miami hangs on to the victory. That's Ron Rivera. Hanging on to the victory. 23-17. to Nice win. That was a good, solid W. We had some good... Good passes there by Carmichael, but most of it was on the ground. You guys can kind of catch the idea here, right? Miami was killing it. Running the football. 48% completion percentage for Jed. You know what? We didn't need it. We didn't need it. He pretty much was non-existent. 24 carries, 217 yards. McMillan was all right. Three for 27. I don't know. 27 yards, kind of garbo. But, hey, you're going to take it, right? You're going to take it when Andre Wingo is doing his thing. Armand Hammer also chipped in with a sack. Jed Carmichael, though, is going to get a little bit of an upgrade after some pretty nice performances within the last couple of weeks, despite not performing well last week against the Colts. So is Drakeen and Timmons. The plus five awareness should help him with his route running so he knows exactly where to be on the field and communicating with your quarterback. So with all the simulation, it's leading up to one last game. One final game of the year, 10-5 Dolphins against 9-6 Patriots. Who is going to win this game for the right at winning the division? The AFC East, can we finally break the streak from the Patriots? Drum roll. No. We're going to lose to the Jake Fromm-led Patriots 24-17. And that's going to give us a wild card berth. Yeah, all of that, all season long, for a little wild card berth. Let's take a look at the box score, shall we? 24 17 loss, 80 offensive rushing yards, not enough. 173 passing yards, not enough. One touchdown for Judd Carmichael, not enough. Jake Fromm, three touchdowns. Who would have thunk it? That is insane. It's insane. Logan Sweeney did his part. Wingo did his part with a 4.6 average. I would have liked to see him run the football a little bit more. Odell Beckham did his thing. 4 for 68 and a score. I mean, you can't really ask for more than that. But unfortunately, we did not get it done. All eyes are on the playoffs, though, because we did make the playoffs. We did make it. And that's awesome. That's something to be celebrated with this Miami Dolphins team. Let's take a look at some of the award finalists. We're only really looking at team builder players. I'm going to scroll through these pretty quickly, and maybe you guys recognize some of the names. Armand Hammer was almost the defensive rookie of the year in the AFC. I feel like he should have won it. I feel like he should have won it. He had an amazing season. Best running back came in second place for Andre Wingo. Marquis Stovall won best linebacker. And guys, if you remember Marquis Stovall, he was a really, really good player, really good linebacker for Amarillo, the Amarillo Armadillos. Taiwan Talbot, Eli Mizell. Talbot coming out of Little Rock, Mizell coming out of Shreveport, if you guys remember those names. And some of the kickers here, Stather Waite, Tyler Bass, Kitayama, Good kickers from our Team Builder Series. Jackson Lunhall, Napoleon McQueen, Denver Tech, ACU being well represented here in the Big 12. In the NFL, Jabari McCollum, Jake Wood. Good players, man. Good players. that We are taking over the NFL. James Washington for the Detroit Lions. Willie Grant also in the playoffs with the Dallas Cowboys. Connor Gatlin, Montana Flynn. Guys, we're all over the place in some of the NFL awards, the award race. NFC best wide receiver, Carson Jackson, making it inside the top 10. Kawaika Lolotai. That's another, that's another name we haven't really seen a whole lot of lately. That was a law offensive lineman for the Midland State Mustangs. Just in time for the playoffs, so Andre Wingo is going to get plus two in upgrades. 
and he's now up to an 89 overall as a two-year pro. Did simulate against the Tennessee Titans, and we did get the W winning by 10, 31 to 21. Carmichael, though, nothing doing with the passing yards, but he was able to get it done in touchdowns and red zone conversions with three touchdowns, and that's why Andre Wingo soaked up all the yards. 12 attempts, 139 yards, over an 11 yards average per carry. It's insane. It's insane. Drakeen Timmons balled out. Four for 73 and a score. You want to talk about Derrick Henry. Well, he's not. He's no longer with the Titans in this franchise. He is with the Buffalo Bills. But pretty much Andre Wingo performed a Derrick Henry. He pulled a Derrick Henry on the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> As we go ahead and simulate the next couple games here, the Chiefs took out the Patriots, and we had some top performers from our Big 12 team builder players with Donovan Seidenstricker and Taiwan Talbot for the Chiefs. Looking at the divisional round, we have some pretty interesting matchups here. We play against the Jacksonville Jaguars and ended up getting the W. Very close W, but we're going to take it anyway. 27 to 24. You see the rest of the scores up there on the screen. Philly beats Arizona. Dallas beats their opponent. And we're taking a look at this box score. 457 yards. There you go, Jed. I like that performance there. 340 yards, two scores, a pick. Again, he's still got he's still got interceptionitis. I don't know. He keeps throwing a lot of picks. I don't like it. Every time we see any sort of simulation, it always seems like Jed's got some got some interception issues. But Keenan Timmons again, guys, two for 85 with a touchdown. I like it. I like it. It was a solid pick for us to go out and get Drakeen and Tim as the former Heisman winner. He's pulling an Antoine Randall out. You gotta love it. But this is the biggest game in Miami Dolphins history for quite some time. It's been a long, long time. It's the Miami Dolphins have had a chance at going to a Super Bowl. In fact, it's been many, many, many years. So the fact that these team builder guys have come together and made this possible with Jeff Henderson at the helm, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out in this little CPU versus CPU simulation. It's gonna take me completely out of the equation. No gameplay from yours truly. It's strictly gonna be a CPU versus CPU sim. And I promise you guys it will be a good one. Patrick Mahomes is the starting quarterback. Now this is actually, I don't wanna say bad Mahomes, but it's, it's not, Patrick Mahomes, like the one that we know. This is Madden 19's version of Patrick Mahomes. I think he might be rated like an 80, uh, like mid 80s. So I don't even think, well, Madden 19 didn't know that he was going to be that good. Kareem Hunt is still on the team. You guys get the idea. Third and four after some pretty good defensive series there for the Dolphins. They're going to pick up the first down. Henderson's looking around like, why was that guy so wide open? Mahomes dropping back, going to toss it here to Tyree Kill and makes a one-man miss. Ends up getting hit off the spin move. They move to the 26-yard line. First and 10 here, a little play action. Mahomes getting some pressure from Armand Hammer, but a nice catch by Tyree Kill. Mahomes now 3 of 3 for 52 yards. So he's already shredding this Dolphins defense. Mahomes, another play action. It's going to be an easy Flip and catch for the touchdown. And out comes the Miami Dolphins offense. 21 touchdowns, six picks. So maybe maybe that simulation, that pick, the interception-itis that I thought Carmichael was having was really not legitimate. <laughs> maybe it wasn't legitimate. He's got six picks. It's not like it, uh, it's that bad. It's not like it's super terrible. But you know what's terrible? This play right here. Andre Wingo getting stuffed in the backfield. Third and ten. You need a really a response. And Drakeen and Timmons comes up with that response. It was a tight window throw by Carmichael, but what a catch by that former Heisman winner, Drakeen and Timmons. Take one more look at this again. Little flip right over the defender. And I don't know how he hung out of that football, but thankfully he did. It's going to set up the first down here. Second and six now. Pass is going to be completed to Odell Beckham, and we're moving the football here. 36-yard line. Let's move it here to first and 10. Play action. Carmichael 
Getting some pressure, but Derby fumbles the ball. Derby fumbles the football, and here comes Anthony Hitchens trying to take it back all the way. He's going to get pushed out of bounds. Come on, Derby. Come on, man. That's not a play that we need. You got to help your quarterback out. Makes a nice throw in the face of a defender, and you're going to drop the football. Unreal. But here's a nice play by Charles Harris. Sacking Mahomes. It's going to push him back. They will get nine yards on the next play. Now third and eight. Here's Anderson making the catch up the middle. Moving to the 36-yard line. Let's jump a little bit ahead here to the 16. Mahomes, little flip. And it's going to go incomplete as the... Ooh, oh, look at this. A little tussle here. Kyle Rivera. You guys remember Kyle Rivera? Odessa State wide receiver. A guy that I thought would get would be pretty darn good. Well, he dropped he dropped a touchdown. Taiwan Talbot almost getting an interception on Jed Carmichael. And there's another pass, another tight window throw by Carmichael that's going to go incomplete. So Miami's going to have to get rid of the football yet again and get Kansas City another shot although it's gonna be third and 17 after a false start no pressure on Mahomes and a deep bomb and oh Anderson makes the catch and nobody's back there and Kansas City on a third and 17 is gonna get a touchdown on the big bomb that's probably over a 70 yard play and Henderson is looking around like what are we doing what are we doing? Has Mahomes missed a pass yet? <laughs> I mean, my God. And then Logan Sweeney gets the call on a 17 to nothing game. Why are we running the football, guys? And Sweeney fumbles the football. It's going to be recovered by Kansas City, and things are getting really bad. Really bad. This is almost as bad as as Dan Marino's last game as a pro. Instead of the quarterback being terrible, it's the team being terrible. But thank God they got to stop. And they shut down Kareem Hunt for pretty much what's looking like it's going to be the rest of the game. So Kansas City is going to have to settle for a field goal. It's going to be 20 to nothing, and I act like that's a positive thing. It's 20 to nothing. We need a response but a false start. A false start, and it's going to turn to first and 15. Carmichael not in the shotgun here. He's under center, and they're going to hand the ball off to Wingo, and nobody's there blocking. Two, rush, two rushing attempts for one yard for Andre Wingo, and we're running the football again. No blocking up front. Sweeney gets stopped in the backfield. Third and 17. By the way, that was Donovan Seidenstricker. Former Midland State safety that came up and made that tackle. Little play action here, third and 17. Carmichael going to toss it up. And Timmons, did he make the catch? Did we get a first down? No. And Jeff Henderson is upset. And I would be too. I would be too. It was a great pass. Tight window throw and just fell incomplete. Going to have to give the football back to Kansas City. And you know what? Things are getting bad. Going from bad to worse. Travis Kelsey with the catch. And now Travis Kelsey for the touchdown. It's 26 to nothing. And we're not even in the third quarter. We're not even in. We're not even out of the first half. Could it get any worse, guys? Carmichael off the back of Rondell Cooley's helmet. And it's going to be an interception. It's going to be an interception. And now Cooley's hurt. Now Cooley's hurt. I guess Jed Carmichael, who's got a lot of arm strength, I think he concussed Rondell Cooley right in the back of the head. I, I mean, what in the world is going on here for the Dolphins? I mean, some questions have to be asked here, right? Some questions have to be asked. Uh, is this Jeff Henderson's problem? Because he's never really won the big game for Ardmore. Is he going to be able to win big games here in Miami? Because right now the, the secondary is looking terrible. I mean, we just had another touchdown. 
I believe that was to Kareem Hunt. Yep, it was. Kareem Hunt actually did come back into the game. It's 44-3. to The AFC Championship game is over with the final score of 44-3. to That might be the biggest blowout in AFC Championship history. And the Miami Dolphins, the team builder Miami Dolphins, are on the wrong end of that scoreboard. Terrible, terrible performance doesn't even do it justice. The word terrible does not even do it justice. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. Wingo, six attempts for one yard, and really the running game was non-existent, mostly due to the game script. When you get down, you get down that early, you got to start throwing the football. But guys, I have no words for it. So Jeff Henderson... He's going to get another shot. He's going to get one more season. And honestly, if we don't make big enough moves to make some things happen here in 2022, well, 2021-2022 season, I think it's Sayonara Jeff Henderson. He's kind of playing favorites. He's playing favorites by drafting all these team builder players, and they're not coming through, guys. We're not winning divisions when we got a good team. We're not winning playoff games. We're not winning championship games when things matter the most. And, uh, yeah, I think that that's going to have to be the script that uh, or the book has been closed on Jeff Henderson if we don't get it done, if we don't get it done. All right, so we're taking a look at some of the Pro Bowl players from the 2021 season. We see quite a bit of team builder players. I wasn't going to list them all off, guys, but – you saw them. You you know who they are, I would hope. But uh, some familiar names in the Big 12 that are making the NFL Pro Bowl. Final score for the Super Bowl sees Dallas beating Kansas City 29-24, which means that Willie Grant, the defensive end from Midland State, is a Super Bowl champion. Unfortunately for Taiwan Talbot and Donovan Seinstricker and Santonio Farmer, can't say an M, middle linebacker. Unfortunately for those guys, they were not able to get the ring, get the trophy. They'll have to try again next season. And hopefully if we meet up with them next time in the playoffs, it won't be that bad of a, <laughs> a bad of a score, 44 to three. Taking a look at some of our guys that we're thinking about re-signing, Mike Gusecki being one of those players. He actually was one of the best tight ends in all of the league last year, but he's going to decline and he wants to test free agency. We're also going to go ahead and sign Jerome Baker, uh, Xavier McKinney. So we're going to get those guys back. And because we don't have a tight end right now, we're going to go ahead and sign Durham Smythe. Just as a placeholder, I think we're going to address tight end in free agency and in the draft, possibly. But our offense, I'm, I'm happy with our offense. The way that it looks, I think we need maybe a couple more playmakers Maybe an offensive line this year. We knew we need to address the offensive line. That that is a definite need. We need to focus on that because let's face it, Jed Carmichael, you know, the, he needs the running game. He's basically like Matthew Stafford, right? He's basically like Matthew Stafford. I, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be a Stafford apologist here. The guy needs a running game. The guy needs a running game though. I mean, he's not Tom Brady out here. He's not Aaron Rodgers out here, right? He's a good quarterback. That needs a little bit of help. I don't think that there's anything wrong with saying that. Carmichael just seems like one of those guys. So we're going to go ahead and sign Jake Butt. He was actually cheaper than getting Mike Gusecki, bringing him back. We're also going to go ahead and try to sign Breland Speaks as a 76 overall. We do need to fill linebacker depth. Anzalone is solid at a 77. Uh, Armand Hammer is really good as an 80 plus, but we, we need some depth. At linebacker position just in case some of the guys need some time off need some need some scheme fit type of deal we're also going to go ahead and sign von bell hopefully he signs with us because strong safety is a little bit of a hole here with taekwon underwood out of mccallan university so we need to focus on that and i've always been a von bell type of guy anyway and there's the, there's our offers guys we've got speaks but townsend bell and matt prater and then we're also going to go after Trey Turner out of LSU. This would be a huge get for us. This would be absolutely huge, especially for our running game. That would really help out Andre Wingo. We don't have to rely so much on Jed Carmichael. So I think we're going to 
pretty much try to break the bank to try to go get Trey Turner at 53.3 million. Finally, finally, that puts us up ahead of the Tennessee Titans. And unfortunately, he rejects the offer. He rejected the offer. Everybody else accepted also other than Breland Speaks. So it's kind of a little bit of an underwhelming free agent class already. We're going to actually go ahead and see who he's signed with. We do still have a lot of money left, so I still feel like we can make some moves that will help us. And somehow the Tennessee Titans just snuck in with a last-minute offer to get us out of there. Mike Gusecki going to Minnesota. Kirk Cousins going to Cincinnati. That's That would actually be really hilarious. That would be hilarious. And what I thought was funny, too, was uh, Nick Foles to Washington. Do you guys think that that could actually happen? Nick Foles to Washington? Ron Rivera was talking about so far this season that they might take Tua. I don't know. They might consider taking in Nick Foles, you know, to kind of compete with Dwayne Haskins and see who the who the better man is. Could happen. Could happen. But overall, it was a pretty underwhelming offseason and free agency. I mean, yeah, we did get Richard Sherman. That should help the pass defense. Kind of making up for a lackluster offseason. We're going to go ahead and try to sign San Antonio Farmer, who was a middle linebacker from Kansas A&M, on the Kansas City Chiefs. So that is a solid move. That is a winning move. So guys, we're now finally here. We're at the NFL Draft. You guys can see the Team Builder players up on the screen. Isaiah Green, Levi Jones, Florencio Woolridge. You guys remember these names? Derek Carter out of McAllen. Joe Russell's up there. Chris Mitchell, the transfer from Ole Miss that went to Little Rock. Tariq Fletcher from Denver Tech. Les Witherspoon. Tristan Prater. Tristan Prater from Denver Tech as well. He's actually a first-round talent being mocked in the second round. Rodney Lawrence actually getting a bump, bump down a little bit to the fourth. That's pretty interesting too. But that is your draft class. There's Harkless Blair, Jared Kirk. You guys remember these names. Apollo Warren. Ooh, Apollo Warren, yeah. Ooh, that would be nice, wouldn't it, guys? Wouldn't it? Try to get Apollo Warren. Ooh, that'd be sweet. Get Armand Hammer. On one side, Apollo Warren on the other side. That'd be awesome. That would be cool. So let's go ahead and actually get into the draft now and uh, see where our guys are going to go. So we'll do a little bit of a simulation here. Oh, there's Mike Monet out of Little Rock. Big power type of guy, 5'11", over 200 pounds. That might be a sneaky pick too later on. So we'll have to see how that's gonna how that's gonna play out. So guys, let's go ahead and get into the draft now, and we'll uh, we'll see where everybody's gonna go. So before we actually get into the draft, I do have to say that let's take a look at some of the players that you guys are coming to know and love: Jace Freeman, John Tavius Nichols, Sidell Riggins. Some of the more notable names here to watch out for: Edgar Watts always came up with timely interceptions for Denver Tech. Drew Lloyd being one of the best defensive tackles in all of the draft. Isaiah Green up there too. Just some familiar names. Gunnar Rivers is in this class as well. So we'll see where everybody goes. Boris Beef going number one overall to Detroit. And I think that that is who the Steelers wanted because they ended up getting Drew Lloyd. Rasheed Davis is in this draft. He got picked by the Chargers. Sido Riggins going to go to the Denver Broncos. And I think, watch this. This is going to be something funny too, guys, because... The Texans also take a team builder running back. Who do you guys think it is? Hurry. Post in the comment section. Who do you guys think it is? Oh, who is it going to be? Let's. It's Isaiah Green. I feel like those two guys are kind of interchangeable. They, I think both those teams wanted a running back, and whoever was going to fall to them, that's who they're going to take. So Isaiah Green goes off the board as well. There goes Derek Carter and Edgar Watts going to Washington. Our pick is actually coming up late in the first round, and... I'm actually considering trying to move up to try to like really guarantee that we get one of our team builder players here. And Gunnar Rivers, Gunnar Rivers is going to Minnesota. So Kirk Cousins goes bye bye, and Gunnar Rivers comes in. Tariq Fletcher going to Tampa Bay. Levi Jones out of McAllen, linebacker now for the Carolina Panthers. Les Witherspoon going to Atlanta. 
And right now we're just gonna go ahead and simulate all the way up until our Miami pick. And we'll see who we're gonna take in the first round. There's Chris Mitchell from Little Rock going to the Arizona Cardinals. Let's go ahead and simulate a little bit further here. The Bears take a quarterback. Go figure, they seem to always do that. And looking at the board, there's nothing here that I really like. Like, not for this pick though. You know what I mean? Because some of these guys seem like they're mid-second rounders, early second rounders. We're pretty much in the second round, you know, being pick number 29. So you could you could justify taking a, a guy like Casey Ogle, right tackle. We need some offensive line help. But just scrolling down here, I mean, we've got wide receivers. We got Apollo Warren just kind of buried down there in the second round. He's being considered as a late second rounder. It'd be kind of a stretch. So we're going to field some offers. And I really just don't like what I see here. Because what I'm hoping for is to is just to move back. Like early second round type of thing. Maybe get a third for this year, for 2022. And I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, the Baltimore Ravens are giving us a second and their seventh. But that doesn't really do us any good. So we're just not going to consider trading down in this scenario for these offers. These offers are not good. But Dallas, Dallas seems to be like the team that looks like they want to give up a little bit more. Some pretty solid picks for us to go get. So we're going to actually go ahead and go into the trade screen and we're going to do a little bit of a manual a manual trade. Let's try to let's try to trade Anzalone. And I really don't want to do this, but I feel like it's a smart thing to do because if you look at it, we're just moving back three picks in the first. We're acquiring a second rounder. So therefore, we'll have two second round picks. I think it's a smart move. I think it's a smart move. Yes, we could have taken this guy, Quinn, a left outside linebacker to kind of fill that for us. But we're, we're stockpiling picks at this point. And I think it might be a smart move. It might pay off. But do we want to go with Apollo Warren right here? Do we really want to do it? I think that's going to be a no. I think that's going to be a no. I think what we need to do is we need to also, we need to take Tristan Prater. And we do tra take Tristan Prater, and it's going to pay off. He's a 78 overall player. He's got that championship pedigree. He's got quick star development. I like the pick. I know we also got Von Bell in the offseason. He's a 77. But I think those two can kind of split some time. Plus, our secondary was so bad, was so bad against Kansas City that we really needed it. And then using our second round pick, Apollo Warren is still sitting there we are going to trade one of those second rounders for draft capital to the Cincinnati Bengals. And in doing so, we have acquired Apollo Warren with superstar development trait plus a 77. So we basically replaced Anzalone with Apollo Warren, the same overall player with superstar dev. I mean, what? how could you do any better than that? Trying to solve offensive line here by getting Taylor Bates from Midland State. It was kind of a reach in Madden's eyes, but he's a 74. And he's going to start over Delmar Nutt, the former Ardmore left tackle. Just looking at Miami picks here, guys, we ended up getting Mike Monet as well. So we're going to draft Mike Monet as a 74 overall player. And the reason for going after Mike Monet, Corey Clement and Logan Sweeney are just really not the two type of backs that really pound it and grind it, right? They're more of the receiving style of back. So getting Mike Monet here kind of complements what Andre Wingo is going to do. It really stretches out that running back group as a solid four, which means we already know that Andre Wingo has a lot of mileage on those wheels and an injury could totally derail this entire football team. So I know in a win now situation, we're going to need a guy like Mike Monet to shoulder the load. And you know what? Value pick, total value pick right here, guys. Quan Quan Alexander from Amarillo is just sitting there. You might as well take that guy. 77 overall player with star development. Gotta love it. There's our draft class, guys. Quan Quan, Mike Monet, Taylor Bates, Warren, and Tristan Prater. That's a winning pedigree type of draft. 
And that's gonna do it. I know this was a kind of a quick 34 minutes, but we've got 10 more minutes left to go, guys, in this video. It's 44 minutes long. I'm just gonna show you guys the rest of each team's draft picks from one through seven or however many draft picks that they had and just kind of see if some team builder players got selected from them and uh, we'll talk about them maybe a little bit. But I am gonna end this video a little bit short and just let you guys soak in who who went where. We got Harkless Blair going to the New York Jets. There's Boris Beef right there. Gotta love that pick for Detroit. Really going after the kind of that Nadamakan Sioux type of feel. I like that pick. Boris Beef was always a boss at ACU. So I hope that that works for him. There's Odell Streeter. He's a 77 overall. That's a good pick for Green Bay. And an otherwise really underwhelming class that Green Bay had. But uh, yeah, guys, I have um, I've been wanting to tell you guys I really appreciate the support with the Team Builder series. Um, I know that we had decided that year six was year six was pretty much gonna get kind of be the last full style of uploads. Year seven eight nine gonna be more condensed more kind of a hybrid type of style a lot quicker a lot faster highlights that we're gonna do for year seven eight nine and year 10 is gonna be that full-on simulation so I appreciate you guys doing everything that you've done for this series and uh, I know it sucks that it's gonna it's gonna be leaving us here soon but we do have some things planned for team builder uh, another team builder dynasty that's gonna be really awesome I'm really excited for it um, I know my brother and I are gonna be uh, pretty stoked to try to bring that to you guys and I think you'll love it. I think you'll love it If you love team builder if you love this big 12 team builder Then you're gonna love what we have planned for you guys in the future So guys, that's gonna be it for today's video for a team builder update and there's about eight more minutes left This is a premiere. I'm just gonna leave you guys in the chat. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit in there and uh yeah, that's it. That's it for today's upload. Let me know what you think about our draft picks. You know, who do you think really won the draft? Do you think the Dolphins won the draft? Is there another team here that you're really impressed with as far as team builder players are concerned? All these other guys are fakies. We don't really care about them, right? They don't exist. Team builder rules. Hashtag team builder forever. What do you think Gunnar Rivers is going to do? He's an 81. Let's take a look at him real quick in that, that Minnesota purple. Yeah, Gun Rivers. Hey, he looks sweet, guys. He looks sweet. So that's going to be it. Leave a like if you like this thing. I will see you guys in the chat. I'll see you in the next one. As always, peace.
Thank you.